Oh, where'd you, there you are. Hey, Toby. Good morning, Toby. Such a good Toby. So sweet, Toby. Love you, Toby. So that's camera strap always in the way. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Lovely morning outside. It can, you can feel it though, the stickiness that's going to set in here in not too long. But it is nice. I didn't point out last week, I forgot to mention, I did get a new umbrella. You know, we've been going through so many umbrellas over here, I didn't really see a point in being like, hey, look, another one. Because, well, you know. Been a pretty low key week out here in the backyard. Haven't done a ton. Been doing some stuff inside and some other projects that are going on we'll talk about and hopefully next week the people did come and get the hot tub i have to say i was really impressed i was shocked that they were able to get this down and out through this slimy bog that's developed from all the flooding back here by the storm so we can get it through this little narrow pathway and out that gate i don't know how they did it well i do i stood right here and i watched it they put a huge pipe underneath it rolled it out and then turned it over on its side and got it onto this long like like a extra long but skinny pallet jack kind of thing. So that's neat. Haven't seen down here. It's not much to see. It's, it's kind of gross. It's a bunch of gunk and dirt and wild strawberries over there. So that was good. Haven't done anything with this area though because I was like, well, I don't know when they're going to bring it back. But I figure may as well get some more planting done. I need to give this lantana a prune because it has so much going on up top that like the slightest breeze, it just poof. Blows it right over. I put a new, well, I didn't put a new stake in it. I took the stake that was in it and pushed it down further, but you know, you saw the root ball that came out with it. There wasn't a ton, but it's been holding up okay. I figured give that a good prune. That would be a good idea. Maybe get some things potted up over here just to help make the spot look just a little bit nicer. And that's it. Not a lot of stuff going on. I do need to start working on the rest of the dismantling over here with this tiki bar. I don't think I'm gonna bore y'all with that though. I don't really see a reason to. It's gonna take a while, probably a couple weeks because there's just a lot of stuff to organize. Just, a whole, you know, it's, it's a mess. You can see it, it's a big old mess. Things are coming along nicely. Plants are doing well, doing their thing and growing. I was debating possibly doing like a mid-month garden tour just because so much is happening. But, I mean, we, it's a vlog, right? I feel like I'm walking around all the time and you can pretty much see what's going on out here. Impatience popping up, looking beautiful. I imagine these gingers will get ready to start setting their spikes here probably sometime in the next week or two, which will be exciting. I'd love to see them in bloom. Yeah, things are just doing their thing and growing. I did do a little bit of pruning on the pumpkins here just because they were sticking out like right about where that little blue pad is. And that's not safe. People shouldn't have to meander around that area to get around the patio, right? It should be a big open spot there. So I pruned out the middle. Then I just pulled these along the sides. I'm gonna give them a chance and see what happens with them. There are some tiny little pumpkins on there. I'll see if I can find some. You kind of see one down there. I think with the moving them around, they're not really appreciating it. And I haven't adjusted my water either, so who knows how they're going to do. This is just, we'll see what happens. Hold a bunch of lace vine not too long ago and it's starting to come back. So I need to get in there, you can see it coming up in here. That's a passion vine back there by the window, but it's coming up through the shrubs and everything. Just have to keep pulling and pulling and pulling on that stuff. But otherwise, things are looking nice out here. Bananas already flushed back out from their prune last week. You can barely even tell if they were prunes, just more open a little bit more light can come through for everything all of the impatience are really starting to fill out and flush out with some colors these were only planted what three weeks ago something like that and they looked pretty pathetic they came out of six packs so it's not shocking at all for them to look pretty sad when they get planted up from a six pack especially as warm as it was right after i planted them they went ahead and righted themselves up and started to fill out and now they're starting to flush out with color we get another flush of flowers on here probably in the next week or so this is just it's going to be absolutely glorious even with the trough in the background oh, there's an ant getting ready to crawl right across my lens i don't know if the caladium choices i put behind them were the best ones though they they don't seem to have the vigor to come up and pop up from behind them but we will see they still need a little bit of time the lemon blush though they don't get huge so i should potentially pull those out I mean, they just woke up. The caladiums are just getting going over here, so I don't have to 
act on that right away, but I should at least clear out around them, probably. I think they would appreciate that. These are the Flatter Me. No, Dawn to Dusk. Aren't they beautiful? Very pretty caladiums. And a tiny little flowers opening up on this perennial begonia. I love it. It's so pretty. Oh, so easy. Italian ice roses. Those are starting to uh, put up new buds. So again, in a couple weeks, that should be really colorful and pretty. And the dahlias aren't doing much. They're getting a lot of root damage from those ground squirrels. I started spraying some peppermint oil and some things in the area to help deter them, but I've been seeing them. The squirrels come through, the chipmunky creatures, little critters. They dived right down in there and they kind of do a number on some of these plants. Not the end of the world. Some of them are doing okay and should be fine. I haven't seen any more Japanese beetles, which is a relief. But I'm keeping an eye out. Anytime I see anything fluttering about, I'm like, oh no, the beetles are back. But usually it's honeybees, which is why I don't really like spraying for them. So I haven't been. I only saw, what, three or four? I haven't seen any more since. Okay, that was a fun little morning walk through. I'm gonna gather some plants and start underplanting some things and throw together some planters and just make things look fun and colorful. Started to clear the area out. I know it may not be that visible, but I have. I suppose the first thing to do here is to kind of evaluate things. I know I had mentioned that, pardon the noise, that was probably very obnoxious, that I think I should probably just repot this begonia, although I gave it a cutback and it's already starting to push out new growth and it did so well in this pot all winter long. I mean, it just bloomed all winter. I do have a tiny tomato. Let me show you. Let's find it. Okay, let's find it as if I don't know where it is. It's right behind me. I got it. Isn't that just adorable? This is, it's from Lowe's. It's called like a cocktail tomato. It looks like a grape tomato. How cute would this be in one of those bubble wrap planters, particularly the green one? I mean, look at that. Mm, okay, well now I'm having mixed feelings. <laughs> and I actually got this to give to my little sister. But, I mean, come on. It'd be adorable. I'll hold on to it for now. The lantana tree is definitely blocking things, so... I need to move that ginger. It looks very sad. I need to get this whole area set up on drip. That was the other thing that I should have mentioned in the beginning of the video, was that my objective was to go ahead and spruce up this spot and just fill it with lots of flowers, and I'm going to run a drip line behind everything so that everything that goes, like, from behind that areca palm over to the front all the way across and then back along that side so they're all on their own watering zone. The way I've been doing it for the last several years, I have just been, uh, like connecting off of other drip lines that pass by it. A lot of my drip runs right behind the hot tub. You can see all these black tubes back here. There's one, two, three, four, five, and I think there are a couple, there should be two that are buried. So there's six lines that run underneath there and I've just been tapping into those, but those go all the way around the patio. And I've talked about how there have been pressure issues because of that, because I can't set it up in a grid, because just the way things are shaped, always beneficial to use a grid if you can. You get better water pressure that way. Is it going to rain? Sky looks really pretty. So that'll be really nice for plants like the gingers that really they like consistently moist soil. Same thing with the heliconias. It'll just free up a little bit of my time watering and I won't I've been using that sprinkler over here and that's been working great but the way you know it's all chip. you get it we need to clean it up get things set up on drip it's going to be fun. I know this isn't the most attractive thing anymore. I got this for five dollars. I want to say last fall or the fall before from the grocery store. It's held up wonderfully. I mostly use that actually for filming videos, so it doesn't really need to be over there. Some fresh paint might not hurt. Camera strap, come on now. I was thinking with the lantana tree that I might just poke it right behind Mr. Freckles here, so that'll be up right above it and flower. The lantana also needs to be moved up. It's a standard form, so it's not going to be in reach of any curious mouths, but the lantana is also toxic, so I want to get that up and out of the way. I've been going through and just like grooming the entire garden of plants that are highly toxic. Talk about that some more in the next video. I just got really distracted. There's some of my pretty flowers over here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see them. Can we get over there? Okay, all right. Hello, trumpet vines. Need to do some pulling on the trumpet vines. The Asclepius are done blooming. Wow, okay, trumpet vines are taking over. I just, I got distracted by tiny sunflowers. That's all. It's very easily distracted. This hibiscus should start blooming soon. Okay, I'm sorry. Get back to work. Weeds. Weeds, weeds, weeds. They're everywhere. These are the remaining dahlias that got planted in this barrel. These are the ones that survived the chipmunks. They're doing okay. They've only been popped up for a little while, so I wasn't expecting much out of them. Back to work. I was just about to take Mr. Freckles, pull him down on the ground, and then lift that lantana tree up here 
and realize that that seems like a dumb thing to do. Work smarter, not harder, right? Slide it over. And may as well come in here and give this lantana tree a nice heavy prune since I'm about to move it and it's going to need things to be more shapely in order to stabilize itself so it's not, you know, flipping and flopping all over the place. It help me if I were to stand that up. There we go. Clip, 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 clip. Here we go. Now I know, seems dramatic and drastic, but this is going to help the plant send its energy back down to rooting into that container down below and it still has some buds in it and once this is up on drip it's it'll take off this is nothing for the lantana it'll be huge again in a matter of weeks now i just need to take that from being right there to being right there i should probably should have gotten a helper it's, it won't be that heavy it's pretty dry i intentionally held off on watering this morning just so that that wouldn't be too heavy here we go well that was kind of a silly thing to do a snap jump with wasn't it that's all right it's back there it's going to fill out and look beautiful have all those fun flowers Right above Mr. Freckles, the freckles croton and underneath these fronds here. I need to prune this off. That's been bugging me for a long time. It does have a fresh spear coming out there, so why hold on to one that's old and sickly and very full of ants? Lots of ants in there, good to know. Need to do a spray on that plant. Now for the fun part, cleaning or just decluttering. Just need to pull all this stuff out of the way. I guess a lot of people might consider the planting to be the fun part. I do, but this is this is fun too. I have this extension cord that's been running through here, and I don't, I haven't been able to, there's a spot that's jamming it up and I'm trying to pull it out to make it look tidier. Maybe I'll find out where that clog is now that I'm moving some stuff out of the way. I love this pot. Isn't it pretty? This had a Japanese maple bonsai in it. Did not survive that cold back in February. That was a shame. Yeah, okay, it's still dirty, but before I go on with too much more cleaning with all the gunk and everything, I wanted to get the drip line run out because that needs some time to stretch so it goes over there i measured it down to around the wall and it comes around the side and it'll connect in over at the house i realize i don't talk a ton about what i do with the drip on the channel so when i do little things like this i should probably show it this is the ender there are different types this is just a pinch ender so this is going to be the end of that line usually you want a few inches on the end and you just slide that up that's going to hold that shut. They also have these pieces right here, which are another type of ender. This right here just screws into that. You push it in, you screw it tight. Then the very end has a cap on it. And you can unscrew these caps and add to them if you need to run more line, or put another fitting on it, a splitter, something like that. I don't need this for this kind of application. Water pressure is not going to be super high over here, and I don't plan on running anything else off of this. So there's that. I'm going to give that time to relax it's been coiled up and usually it takes a little while in the sun and the warmth to get that to have some more flexibility to it never has much flexibility but just even a little bit more would be nice this is when i was going to come through here and sweep everything up but my broom just broke which is fine i've had it a long time i have a muck shovel why i own a muck shovel i don't know i think this is probably going to be really loud yeah that's going to be noisy is a vast improvement. Still some dirt, but that's okay. I'm gonna be putting pots and things over here. We're gonna be spilling more dirt and have a final cleanup when all that's done. Got that extension cord untangled from inside of there and I've been slowly pulling the tension on that drip line to stretch it out, get that loosened up as much as I can. I've got the gorilla cart loaded up with some various planters that I want to have over there in that area and they're partially full all-purpose potting mix and I think I may have overfilled some of these but that's okay why is there plastic in here all of these pots here are frost proof with the exception of over here this is the Telavera pot that has to come in the winter time so I can either plant it up with annuals that'll get dumped here in the fall time or put a house plant in it which is probably what I'll end up doing something tropical that I'll want to take inside in this pot I want to do one of these oh so easy roses this is 
one of the leftovers I had from the ones I planted down the way over underneath that Washingtonia. This is one of those cylindrical bubble wrap planters is what that's called. Can you guys see what I'm talking about? Hopefully the lighting today. Very extreme and obnoxious. I think I either want the rose to go in this one or in this one. This is a pretty pot. Isn't that a beautiful pot? It has like a aged color inside the glaze. It's a beautiful crackle glaze. So I'm removing some of that soil because I did overfill it and I want to amend the lower portion of this mix and what I refill with with some compost. It's because it is a rose, so I want to make sure that the soil drains well and has some nice organics in it. So compost, just a handful. Not too much, nothing extreme, just something in there to help liven up that potting mix. There's nothing going on in that potting mix. Just coconut, perlite, some sand. There's some slow release in there, but who knows if that's any good. And uh, there's a little bit of all-purpose potting mix in here too that I have left over. And that's peat based, so it's blended up in here, which I think should be okay. I don't normally wear gloves when I'm doing stuff out in the garden because I kind of like the way the soil feels. I think it feels nice. But when I planted up those oh-so-easy roses last time, my hands were just covered in tiny little prick marks. I figure if I have these, may as well use them, right? They were sitting right next to me, so it'd be silly not to. How's that level? Oh, I like that. Want it about an inch below the surface so that I can heavily water it in case the drip isn't going to be doing what it needs to do for the plant. I think that's good. Yeah. It's maybe a couple inches down, but even that, that's fine. That compost mixed in with the soil as I go in and fill in around the edge of this container here. Yeah, see, the thing I don't like about the gloves is it's harder to feel what I'm doing. I'm spilling a lot more soil with these on. But I'm also not as used to wearing the gloves. That's something to keep in mind. I'd probably add some rose tone into this. It's being freshly planted, I wouldn't normally be concerned about that, but it isn't a container. You know, containers, potting mixes, those leach out their nutrients much more quickly. You can always come in and top dress it with some of that rose tone. I have the gloves on, so I may as well go ahead and just put some of that in there right now. Just a little bit around the perimeter. That'll water in just slightly. Mix it in there. Let's go ahead and get these off. Okay, they're stuck. Why are they stuck? There we go. Pull those off. I don't like wearing them. I suppose I could have left them on because I'm going to come in here and give these a prune. So now is when I would have wanted those gloves on more than any other time. You don't have to deadhead these roses, the oh so easy roses. Okay, let's roll off my clippers. But it has a few wild growths like that one right there. It was kind of going in the wrong direction. And I figured just may as well get those old buds off of there to help encourage it and let it go ahead and put its energy down. Just like I was talking about the lantana earlier in this video to let it devote that energy to putting its roots out, setting up some new buds. This has some insect damage on these, but I don't know what from, because I don't see any bugs on them. I'll come out here at nighttime and have a closer look with a flashlight, see if there's anything crawling around on these, make sure there aren't any uh, uh, earwigs or snails or, well, I'd, well, I'd see the Japanese beetles, I don't think those are going to be a problem. That down a little bit more, and this one too. There we go. I know, not the most beautiful thing ever, but the oh so easy roses, these are going to missed one right there. It'll keep flowering throughout the season. It's just going to need to rest and put out some roots and get going again. They have really pretty flowers that look kind of like the peace roses. They have the yellowish pink and sort of an apricot to a uh, coral tinge to them. The flowers on them change colors as they age and grow. And even though I'm going to be putting everything up on drip, all these planters that I do here, they still will get an initial very heavy thorough watering with it overhead with the hose. All right, so for this Talavera pot, since I need to make sure that whatever goes in there is either an annual or a tropical, I was thinking that this hype, okay, you can't even see it. The variegated sea hibiscus. I think that that would look really pretty in there. It's a very fun, colorful pot. Has lots of fish on the sides. And this is a really lovely, colorful plant. I don't think I'll be doing a trailer in it because I don't want anything to cover up the art on the front. But since this is a plant that I'll want to be bringing in no matter what, because of the cold temperatures, this should be a good fit for this container. I had original, oh, look at all these maple seedlings, still pulling them out. Maple seedlings everywhere. So this was shipped bare root, but with some soil to me back in the early spring. I got this from Top Tropicals and I popped it into this little, I think this is an eight inch container. Look at how much rooting that's done since then. Lots of roots on this plant. It's doing pretty well. Hibiscus, particularly these sea hibiscus, they do like their soil to hold on to some moisture. 
and that mix I put it in well. It does hold on to moisture. I actually think it drains just a smidge too sharply. This potting mix should be better for it. It isn't drastically different from what I already have it in right now. It's just slightly less porous. So I'll try and work some of that out from the root ball. You can't even see it. Let me try and adjust my camera without touching it because my hands are dirty. I'll try and loosen some of that out of there without disturbing too much of the root zone because we don't want the soil to just, or the moisture that is, to just wash away from this part of the root ball since this part is going to drain more quickly than the, you get it. Am I making any sense here? Probably not. There isn't a drastic difference between the soils. Otherwise I would go through and loosen this up a lot more to get some of that other mix out of there so that there's not a huge difference between the quality of drainage between the two. I think that this should be fine, especially since it's going up on drip. Having things on drip can make a big, big, big difference. It wasn't originally centered with its root ball, so that's about as centered as I think I'm gonna get that. I know I said I wasn't gonna plant a trailer over there, but I think that some nasturtium would look really pretty in here. And I have some nasturtium that have been sitting around and uh, they need to get potted up. So I think that this would be a good spot to put them because this is a container that's going to have pretty heavy amount of water flowing through it. Make sure to plant up the thirsty plants with each other, right? This is a variegated nasturtium. Is that gonna be a problem? Variegated with variegated? That's a lot of variegation in one pot. Okay, camera's flashing, gonna overheat. I'm gonna give these a cut back, go gather the rest of the plants for the other containers and give the camera a chance to cool off. Okay, camera cooled off. So the nasturtiums that are in here, you can see they've gotten leggy. They need a cut back, so I'm gonna come in, give them a trim, just like so. They'll flush back out. Look great in no time. I also put a tropical rose sun impatient in here that's also a little bit leggy that'll fill out nicely it'll come over the front the nasturtiums will kind of meander along the sides spill over somewhat and they may even want to climb these are all plants that appreciate good amount of moisture the impatient can take it or leave it as long as the water drains freely which it will then it's gonna be fine and i may even set the drip up on all these in a separate video just because i get so many questions about drip and it's so customizable that it's a difficult thing to talk about. So I figure if I were to be setting up an area with drip to a whole bunch of pots, that that might be a good thing to just have on its own, not mixed into too many different things. Okay, and for this next planter, oh, I just realized a problem. I have this beautiful coleus here, and I want this potted up all on its own. I don't want it mixed in with a bunch of other plants. What's the name on this one? Indian Summer. I think that would be beautiful in one of those cylindrical pots, but maybe the red on the red might be a bit much. Perhaps I'll swap the begonia. Let me do that. No, 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 no. No, change my mind. I was going to take that begonia I showed at the beginning of the video that was in the green pot and put it in this pot and then put this coleus in that green pot. However, that's going to just like scream Christmas to me. I don't want that. Yes, I know. I overthink things. I am well aware of that. Let me put that down a little bit lower. Potting mix is sort of clumpy. That's beautiful. I love this coleus. It's so pretty. It has great color for summer and for fall. Beautiful foliage. Okay, and for this last container, I know I want to put a perennial in here because this is a nice sturdy pot. It's been through a lot of winters out here. I think this would be nice with a Veronica. This is the Magic Show Wizard of Oz Veronica. Full sun to part. They get a little bit lanky. They don't get much sun, so I'm gonna make sure that this goes in a spot where it gets plenty of sun. That wall where the hot tub is, the light does vary quite a bit from one side to the other. That maple tree that's over there keeps it so that part of that spot gets a good amount of light and the other spot stays fairly well shaded. This is pretty, I love that Veronica. Fill that back in, get these placed, and maybe do a couple more planters. This Veronica is hardy all the way down into zone four, so this is a good plant to have around for, not for winter interest, but if I just wanted a pot with something that'll come back every year, this is a good option for that. And my garden is fairly damp. So I have a lot of moisture loving plants and Veronica is one of those plants where they can take it, but sometimes they end up not looking great. And the sun in my backyard is just not what it used to be. So that's why I like the idea of having this plant in a pot because I can move it around as the seasons change and the angle of the sun changes to make sure that it keeps getting the sun that it needs and I'm not going to have to worry about getting too much water. Like right now, the ground is just absolutely saturated from all the rain we've been having. It's been a few days since we've even had rain, but things are still pretty 
wet. And this is just about to a point where it needs a cut back with these Veronica when the flowers finish off at the very end and give it a good chop about 50 percent probably right around here i like to get it so that just some of the foliage underneath the flowers comes off with it and then keep it well watered and it'll flush back out put on a whole new show of flowers the pollinators absolutely love these plants that's another reason i've wanted them in the backyard but just didn't have the right spot for them. having it in a pot should solve that i think that's going to look nice over there all right i'm gonna start placing some plants making progress still a ways to go though uh I don't know how much more I'm going to be able to get done out here right now for the rest of the day. It's getting kind of late. That was thunder. Okay, well, I have a couple of deck boxes. That's what they're called, deck box planters. Tall ones I wanted to go on each side of this beautiful plastic staircase here. But I'm just about out of potting mix. And this is how full they are. I'm going to dig around. I think I barely have enough potting mix to get these done. It's going to be raining, though. I don't know. I'm a little on the fence here as to what to do. Okay, switching over to the GoPro, which has horrible audio. You may not even be able to hear me. I have to voice this entire thing over. Okay, so these are as done as they're going to get right now. I do want to put a Supertunia Vista bubble gum over the front of each one of these. Pardon the deck box back there. Got moved out of the way for the hot tub to get removed. Oh wow, the lens is really foggy. I'm just gonna go with it. There'll be a final shot and things will <laughs> look better. These are deck box planters from, uh, I think I got these at Lowe's. They still have their plastic on them. I did that intentionally because this white material that they're made out of is, I don't know, it's not the best quality. If I could go back, I don't think I'd buy these. They feel very breakable and they weren't cheap. However, I think they look nice. Yeah, they look nice. So in here, <laughs> facing the wrong direction, I did two Sun Impatiens. These are hot coral. One of them has a flower on it. Beautiful flowers. It's a very vibrant coral color and they have more of a darker foliage on them than the other Sun Impatiens. It's kind of this reddish chocolatey color. And then I did two of the Heliconias in the center of each one. And then I want a Super Tunia Vista bubblegum in the front for each one also because I really want this spot to just have just like a wall of beautiful pink flowers in front of everything. It is going to be a lot of pink because the pink and the pink, pink sun impatient and the pink begonia, or not begonia, petunia. All right, can you all tell my wheels have been spinning like a thousand miles an hour for the last like 20 or 30 minutes because I was panicking about the rain. Needing to get this done or at least make a really, really big, bold impact over here. So that's, that's that. I'll pick up a couple of petunias for the front of those at some point and they'll be get centered a little bit more too. This needs to be scooted a little bit that way. Then I need to move those two little planters that are over there. I had the Veronica in this planter. Y'all saw it, you saw me do it. And I decided that I think that that had to go in the seashell planter. Look at that. That's just beautiful in the seashell. And I put a silver brocade Artemisia in there with it. And I was almost done putting this up. And I was like, okay, it stopped raining. Go get the camera. Yeah, see, that's where I left off. So I'm going to finish getting that filled in. I'm gonna plant this up with a whole bunch of colorful things and uh, go ahead and put things where they need to go and probably wrap this up. Hey Tobes, hey Toby. Thanks for coming over to say hi. You look so handsome in your new collar. That beautiful rainbow great, nobody can even see it. All right, two more. Okay, by two more I meant one more because I am completely out of potting mix. So I decided that I'm gonna plant up some gingers in here, which that's what I wanna do with this planter anyways. But I did roughly, I don't know, you saw it on camera, about maybe a 50-50 blend of garden soil compost with potting mix which is not something that we typically recommend because composted garden soils well they they chunk up they don't breathe as well so they're not great for pots that's why i want to use a potting mix they breathe better but i'm going to blend this together really well so that will help lighten it up and i'm putting annuals in here so i'm not going to have to worry about this getting too muddy over the years and not being great for the plants and the plants that are going in here are moisture lovers they're curcumas they need to get out of these nursery cans. I've only had these for like a week and a half, but you can see they really don't look fantastic. They will be very happy to have a larger container that's going to hold more moisture. Oh yeah, they're gonna be so much happier in this container. Thought about filling in the sides of this pot with Creeping Jenny. I have a ton of it, but this is gonna be sitting on the ground. So it's not really even gonna be visible that it's trailing. That's just gonna hide in the pot. I think about that. Yeah, those are cute. They'll need to stand up some more. I'm talking about the gingers. 
they'll stand up some more once those get going. That Veronica in there will start to spread out. That Artemisia will spill over the sides. The Both of those, I think I started to talk about this and then I deviated. Both those should be hardy down in zone four. So that they'll be in those containers all winter long and come back next year. And then right next to those, right over here, I set in the pot that I was going to plant some stuff in, but I ran out of potting soil. Those are frog in a blender colladiums. And when I got more soil, maybe I'll pop those in there. I actually think that that foliage looks nice with that pot. <laughs> you can barely see it right now. That'll look nice when I get that potted up in there. Have a begonia on this plant stand here. Don't think I'm going to keep that there though. Oh, it just got really dark out of nowhere. Haven't planted up the foot yet. I'll do that another time. There are a few other little pots sitting around this parlor palm in the corner here. This one, I don't like that there. It's too much light. I'm gonna stick that back here in this corner. Yes, yes, I like that. That's very pretty. Fills things in, it's nice and lush, very pretty. And then those boots, those are going on my front porch, that ginger, that might go over into the plant stand. So for now, I'd say this is looking pretty good. Oh, and I stuck a limelight drusina in this corner here with the rose underneath it, then that hibiscus next to it. There's just so much color. I like the leaf shape. I think that that just, it added something really special just by popping that one plant into that spot and it's going to get a good amount of light there. It was getting a pretty decent amount of light where I had it before. You see how the foliage is more of a yellow color, which isn't that unusual for the limelight dracino. It is, however, a smidge more yellow <laughs> than you would typically see. So I'll keep an eye on that and make sure that it doesn't scorch if it does. And I could probably just swap it out to the other side and maybe just move the begonians over there, over there. Keep playing around with things. It was a hard day's work. And it probably didn't seem like much, but every little thing I did, I actually had like 20 other steps off camera that you didn't see, like just getting to use a gorilla cart alone. That was full of stuff that was on the other table. I had to unload all that into the garage and reorganize the garage essentially just to use the gorilla cart. So I feel very happy to have these things done. I didn't set the drip up. It, it doesn't need it right now. It's gonna storm. I will go ahead and water everything in and I'll work on that drip. Maybe do that in Wednesday's video or next weekend. I don't know. Nice, thanks for hanging out. I had a good time. Got real dirty, got lots of fun stuff done. I think that these two planters are going to look beautiful when they have that cascade of pink petunia coming over the front. And like I said, I do need to open this up more. Since the hot tub's not here right now, it doesn't really matter, but I do want to make sure that there's enough space to actually like get into it when that comes back. But I have no idea when it's coming back. Could be weeks, months, have no idea. Like I said, this is just sort of the start of this area. I will want to go through and pop some more annuals in certain spots, maybe some more perennial planters and just keep adding to it throughout the season. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. Hope everything's wonderful. Knife's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Oh, it's raining. Okay, bye-bye.